Metasploit Minute is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from this show and can spare even a dollar, please consider contributing at metasploitminute.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. Today on Metasploit Minute, we're actually be going over Windows persistence, or actually persistence in general. And this is, this is a question that was um, first suggested, uh, this is an episode first suggested by Crestify. Um, on, on the YouTube comments. On YouTube so, comments, yeah. Yes, we read every single one. Much valued, and it's a really good question. It is. So we've talked about persistence in the past a little bit. We have. And, and the one thing that I was Linux. taking away from that, I would say, is that I, I know that, like many things, one is none, similar to backups, and two is one. Right. right? You, you're going to need multiple Slam that forms into everyone. of persistence. <laughs> yeah, no, you, yes, because that's going to be a really a huge bummer when you spend all that work getting into a host and then you lost your connection and now you've got to do all of, over again. Right. Yeah. Can you give me an example of like, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe you, um, maybe you do a phishing campaign. Mm -hmm. you, got the, you got somebody in the organization to click the link and run the thing and now you're in. Oh no, <laughs> quick, before they reboot or suspend their laptop or whatever have you. Right, so persistence comes in in a lot of different ways, right? So, um, and, and it really depends on what you want to happen. So um, persistence could be as easy as adding a new user. Oh. That could be your persistence, right? So you have to, when you think of persistence, you need to think of what you actually want out of it. Do you want a shell back? Do you want to just enable RDP right. where it wasn't enabled? Yeah, do you want um, to open, you know, like a Samba share or something? Right, just right. Just persistently be able to get to this computer. Right whether that's through the terminal or whatever right. have you. You just gotta keep your mind open on those things. And, and that's where a lot of people fall down, right? So many things that they, they need to install something to get a shell and have it call back. And you just, you just gotta take a step back and breathe and say, what, is, what does this system already provide me that I can leverage. Right, so because if it's a file server and what you really want access to are the files, then maybe the persistence is like... Setting you know, permissions. Setting permissions on Samba shares or something like yep, that. Yep, exactly. So that, okay, so, you know, when I think about uh, persistence and the whole idea that uh, why is two one and one is none is because, you know, if policies change on the firewall or the systems administrator notices a funky process they're not quite keen on, should I be keeping multiple uh, different forms of uh, persistence because the network environment may change or mm -hmm. because you know the, the computer environment may change? And right. am I just like hedging my bets when it comes to those? So um, it, for Metasploit right now, um, which is changing, so little hint that this is changing really, <laughs> Metasploit changes really rapidly. That's so, really awesome. It's so, almost um, like seven things are rapidly changing. Right. So, it's a horrible it's, joke. Oh, um, so, <laughs> um, a thumbs up for terrible jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so, the crazy thing is, like, um, this year, I'm actually, I worked with, and I was, and I was uh, there was a Rapid7 form that was asked to fill out for any interpreter add-ons. And um, I filled it out with, like, 40 things that I'd like as feature requests. But as part of that, they um, asked me to come, kind of help, you know, formulate things into storylines and, and do kind of stuff like that. One of those things was like an ID for a specific session. Um, so right now, when you when you have persistence, mm -hmm. pulling this yeah, back you, in. You, do, you run sessions, I got well, multiple interpreters back. Right, but let's say that you install 30 different persistence methods, that you have all this crazy stuff. Great. You're going to get 30, 30 sessions. sessions in, right? Yes. And you're not going to know where these levels are. Yeah, and, and you have you to, know, is, you is know. this Bob or is this Alice or is right. who is this? And, and that actually um, creates a good point, right? So um, in, when you do persistence, um, it is based on different le user levels too. So you, if, you, if you install a persistence method that will start up when Explorer starts up, but you're a system level process, when you get that persistence to call back, it's actually gonna be as that normal user. So you're losing those privileges. So that's that's a really good point because I mean, if you're spending just like, if you're spending the time to do say a successful phishing campaign where you now uh, get a you know, user permission, well great, make sure you get persistence back from that point. It's kind of like bookmarking in a way, yeah. right? 
So the same thing with your privilege escalation. Hooray, your system now. Two is one, one is none. Make sure you still have a way to get back into the yep. system without having to perform the same escalation because it may or may not work the second time. Exactly. And there's actually, um, just going over here, there's actually some uh, post modules that do persistence. So um, S4U persistence, and I'll talk about that in a second, VSS persistence, and there's actually uh, another persistence one, uh, and it's just called persistence. Okay. So let's just go from top bottom. Persistence itself is um, it installs a, an executable onto the system. It's a service executable, and it runs as a service. So that will be system-level process. So one thing to keep in mind, though, is system-level processes don't have proxy settings. So if you're within an organization that uh, has a proxy, yeah. your persistence is just not going to work. So you're installing this thinking that you're going to get a system shell back. And it's not like going to work. migrate over to iExplore so it uses its proxy settings? Yes? No? We'll talk about that in another segment. Okay, it, cool. With something called pre-pen migrate. Oh, okay. So not yet. All right. Get ahead of ourselves. We'll, we'll <laughs> so, um, and then there's S4U persistence. And this is actually a really um, pre, like, really cool persistence method. And this was created by Matthew Weeks, also known as Script Junkie, who um, provides a lot of stuff to Metasploit. Um, and this is cool because what it does is um, in scheduled task, when you create a scheduled task, it creates this XML file in, in SQL and Windows tasks. Okay. Um, and that XML file has, has what, is, what this task is supposed to do. And the cool thing about tasks is that um, you have the ability to say, do this every five minutes, yep. do this when, when this event happens. My favorite is at now. It's just a great way to fork, but yeah, anyway. Right, but, but at, at is limited to a specific time, and it only runs once. Yeah. Whereas with um, scheduled tasks, you have on idle, on logon, on startup, um, uh, on event. I love the on event one because you can say on event, you failed logon. Huh. And then you can cause a failed logon and you get persistence back. Okay. Um, so this S4U persistence specifically is for um, for scheduled tasks. And the great thing about it is that um, what it does is it has a special operator. And I'll load this real quick just to um, S4U just to show you. So you have to have logon as batch job as your permission, one of your permissions for whatever you run this as. So definitely look into the information for any persistence module you're about to run. Um, but um, what it's doing is, is making a service for user, and that's the S4U part. Ah. So that service for user, so you, let's say that you're logged in. You're not system, you're not elevated, um, but you have the privilege to run as... As the user. As a user, right? Or as, as a batch job. And some, some places allow that, some places don't. So sure. you're gonna just going to have to know that or, or look it up. Um, but this makes it so that this persistence will run even if that user's not logged in. Wait. What? <laughs> even if they're not logged in? Be right. Oh, right, because it's a so scheduled job? It's a scheduled task. So it runs as a batch job uh, and allows it to run even when that user's not logged in. So, so now you have the user logged. So you, you can do are everything still, that, user, that can, user can do. Right? Even when, you know, after five o'clock, they leave the office. They log the off, you lose logged. your they sessions, log, mm, the scheduled task kicks, kicks in. Kicks off, and there and you go. You, got so your you set it back. for like six o'clock by the right? time they're home, and then ha, ha, ha. Right. That's pretty rad. So the other one, the other cool one is, um, is, is the VSS persistence. So this one actually allows you to inject into a volume shadow copy. <laughs> so not even like for, like for on disk. Like for backups or something? Right. Like you're not even... So you're not even showing up on disk. So it's, it's, it's a... So again, executable. it's just like the DLL injection. Into, right into sort memory. of. So it's it, like it is on disk, but it's in a it's sort of a compressed version of the okay. disk. It's like a, a diff. Sure. Right? So... The crazy thing about this is that you can still execute from that, mm -hmm. right? That's that's pretty cool. Right. And those are just some of the the ones just built built right built now. into Metasploit. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's these these persistence methods are Windows, and you drop an executable, um, the service executable, the S4U executable, the you know, the um, VSS executable. These are dropping executables to get persistence, um, but you don't always have to do it. Like I said. 
um, just getting back to the, the whole mindset of persistence. You have right. to keep it open and say, I don't need to drop an EXE for everything. Right. No, I mean, some of the best things are just like, I mean, one of my favorite, really, is just uh, on Windows 7, especially if you know it's a laptop, so it's going to have a wireless card, is turning it into a soft AP. I mean, yeah. sure, you have to be within proximity, but if you, you know, then you can connect to them as if you would any other AP, mm -hmm. and now you're on their computer, or well, you're on the same network as their computer. Right. And so if you've added a user, if you've opened a Samba share, things of that nature. Right. So um, one of the most interesting, and we'll put a link in the show notes somewhere, um, interesting uh, persistence methods that I've found um, was a talk done by Mark Baggett um, and, I f and Malware Jake, I forget his first name, or for his last name, um, but they did a talk at ShmooCon um, called um, uh, Format That Drive or something, something along the lines where um, basically persistence methods that malware uses that you just need to just quit. At this point, FDisk format, right. reinstall. Right. You know, <laughs> you know. So the cool thing about the one that, one of the ones that really kicked in for me was a, um, a persistence method that you used um, the, uh, sorry, I'm gonna have to break on this. The persistence method that um, what it did was installed a SDB or SBD, which is basically a, um, a compatibility plugin. So you know when um, you're trying to run an old game on Windows 7 and sure. you run in XP compatibility mode? Yeah. Um, what this SBD does is it actually has a bunch of different options allowing you to um, do things on certain events and, and stuff like that. Um, and I could be messing this up, this could be a different one, but I, I'm pretty sure that it's the SDB stuff that um, what it does is it listens for a, a wireless access point, and when that wireless access point happens, yes. it, it does. It gives you a shell. I have seen this, and it actually, well, not just this, but anyway, I just love the idea of wireless APs as like CE2. You know, no, no. So, so this isn't C2, right? But I've seen this as well. So you couple right. that with that, and then boom, you right? Know? <laughs> or yeah, yeah. So. So you just, roll up to, you just roll up to the warehouse or you roll up to the wherever you've done it and you spin up an AP and you get a show. Yeah, right. Or, or you just know that, hey, you know, when they take their laptop to this coffee house or whatever. Yeah, there's you a... Know, yes. Exactly. Yes. Or home or whatever. Yep, because, huh. In fact, actually, that's kind of brilliant for the whole home thing because you're like, well, the I really don't want to be punching through the firewall right? at the office, but I do know that their home access point is named Linksys or whatever. Because, because you, used you the, dumped the, from back a couple episodes back. Right, the yeah. WLAN profiles. Right, so now you've profiled your victim and you know when they go home, they connect to right. this access point and they're obviously not on the corporate firewall when they're at home, so you use that to get yourself exactly. your shell. And it only executes when those protections are not in place. Sorry, corporate security. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is a good one. I, you know, we could just talk and talk about persistence yeah. because it's so much fun. Uh, we will persistently continue to retouch on this topic if you do so ask in the comments below or if you email msf at hack5.org. And that's where you can uh, also let us know what you'd like to see on future episodes because right. this one is brought to you by you guys. Not just in the comments, in fact, it's brought to you by you guys. If you support the show in the numerous ways you can, you can find all the ways over at metasploitminute.com. And here there's a Patreon. Right? Yeah, patreon.com slash Mubix, M-U-B-I-X. That's where you can, um, and all the people who are already there, I really appreciate it. It's such an awesome thing that, that now we've gotten to the point where season five is completely supported by them. Like the flight out, all, all of this stuff is just... Im so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just heartwarming to see like that this can happen. And I, I don't know. I'm still, you know, buzzing on the whole idea of like the democratization of media. It's, you know, <laughs> yes, we've been doing Hack 5 for 10 years, but uh, this is something really, yeah. truly amazing. And it's also yeah. been, you know, a pleasure to, you know, grow up with you, Mubix. Yeah. Hey. You know how long it's been? It's... It's been 10 years. So it sounds like we've got quite a bit of uh, experience and awesome stuff to share with the audience. Mm -hmm. So if uh, what I'm alluding to here is that <laughs> if you're interested in coming down to the San Francisco Bay Area, June 26th, we're doing our very first training. And because it is our first, we've got like basically like ridiculous discount so that you can get 
hands-on with Mubix and Sebastian and, and myself um, and learn. Pen testing with Hack5. Pen testing with Hack5. Right, so you'll be using Hack5 gear. You're going to get the awesome tactical yep. hacker satchel full of Hack5 gear, and then learn from us how to use it, and then dive deep into Metasploit. So yeah, uh, and it, and it's practical, right? Yeah. So I don't teach anything that doesn't have a practical application. Uh, it's not going to be a flat land that you can just throw stuff at, and it's always going to be XP with MSO867. It's going to be oh, awesome. <laughs> But it's going to be fun stuff. It's going to be actual like corporate security type level stuff that you get to break into and learn and SDR and yeah. all kinds of stuff. You can come down to the Hack5 warehouse and do that and then we yep. can all head over and grab a pint at the Baltic afterwards. Awesome. It's going Sounds to be like good stuff. So uh, just want to throw that out there because it is like early bird access. You're not going to want to miss out on yeah, this. Yeah, not so very just, many seats. Yeah, and I hope it's not sold out by the time because we're recording these ahead of time. <laughs> right. You guys know how that works. Might be sold out already. Oh, I really, <laughs> Mubix, I hope we're not. <laughs> Jeez, I'll, yeah, okay, anyway. That's, that would be really would, bad if I, this was already sold out. It's already sold out. <laughs> yeah, like all the comments are like, yeah, guys, you told us this last week when it was sold out. Anyway, um, <laughs> with all of that, I just do want to, again, say thank you for allowing us to make this happen. Um, so let us know in the comments, let us know in the feedback emails what you guys want to see. All right, that's it for Metasploit Minute. Until next time, I'm Mubix, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home.